Hello and welcome to Ember's Reading Room, where we are going to look at two of the two-minute stories from my bedtime book of two-minute stories. What's that you're saying? Oh, yeah, we were doing three. But two two-minute stories just has such nice alliteration to it. Also, yes, we're milking the book for all it's worth. <laughs> there may even be a story about milking in here. I don't know. Hmm. No, I think that's in my other book of fairy tales where a woman has a blacksmith pour a pitcher of milk onto his anvil and it turns into silver and he shoes her horse and it turns into a unicorn. Uh, I, I like, okay. Sh shall we just go back to these stories? Yes, my bedtime book of two-minute stories, edited by Rosemary Garland... Illustrated by Tony Escott and Sally Wellman. So the two stories we have for you are The Little Church, written by Rosemary Garland, and Cowslip Keys, written by Margaret Connor. The Little Church. Mother couldn't tell Katie her usual bedtime story because she had to go out. So Daddy said, I'll tell you a story instead. What shall it be about? We often have stories about a mouse or a kitten or a pony, said Katie. So could we have a story about something different? Well, what do you want it to be about tonight? asked Daddy. Katie thought hard. About a... about a... but she couldn't think. Hurry up, said Daddy, or your story time will be over. We've only got two minutes, don't forget. Katie thought very hard. About a... about a church! She said quickly. Oh, that's difficult, said Daddy. Churches are particularly difficult to tell a story about. Why don't you start it and I'll finish it for you? Once upon a time, started Katie, there was a little old church. I can't think of any more, she said. Well, I'll finish it, said Daddy, who was very clever at finishing other people's stories. Once upon a time, there was a little old church, and it stood right at the top of a hill. It had stood there for years and years, but of course, no one visited it except on Sunday mornings. Do you know why no one went there in the evenings? asked Daddy. No, said Katie, because the little church was so far away from anywhere that there was no electricity or gas. It had no lights at all, and it was a very, very long climb to the church. And Mr. Pooks, who used to carry coal or oil for the lamps, was too old to do it anymore. We stopped having church services up at the church for years now, he said. Now, the rector's little girl was called... Shall we call her Katie? asked Daddy. Yes! shouted Katie. Katie wanted to have carol singing on Christmas Eve at the church. So she thought and thought how they could light that little church so that the people could sing carols without sitting in the dark. At last, she had a wonderful idea. She wrote a big notice and asked her daddy if she could hang it in the church porch. The notice said, Carol singing on Christmas Eve. Bring your own candle. So on Christmas Eve, all the people climbed up the hill to the little church. And when they arrived in the porch, Katie's daddy stood at the door and he lit everyone's candle. Then they went in and sat down. The more people who went into the church, the lighter and lighter and brighter the church grew, until it was like the blazing stars in the sky. It was so exciting. And it was the loveliest Christmas carol singing anyone ever remembered. And do you know, they always do that every Christmas now. Wasn't Katie's idea a clever one? It was. And excuse any kind of wonkiness in our voices. We're just getting over colds. Yep, and then we have a short little poem here. Little church in the wold, though you're very, very old, I love your steeple painted gold and your walls all green with mold. <laughs> I even love how the little frame is green, where the text is. Mm, that would be the background. The frame would be red with black scroll work. Yeah, you're right. I shouldn't be having to correct you on artistic matters. Well, my brain saw the whole thing as a frame. So on the first page, we have a nice little drawing of the little girl looking at Daddy going, Tell me a story with a little teddy bear. 
How classic. And then the next shot, a wonderful little drawing of the church, houses, and some forest, and some trees. I know that was kind of redundant there. And a fence, a brick with a gate in it leading up to the church on the hill. And then we have the final shot, our final image, with everyone in the church with their candles singing carols. Very nicely lit from the candles. Stain nice stained glass windows in the background. And I couldn't really read that line with a straight face. Or your story time will be over. We've only got two minutes, don't forget. Yeah. And that was done by the editor. Because Rosemary Garland is the editor and she was also one of the four authors. Mm-hmm. I wonder if she was the person who got everyone together. Probably because she's the editor. That's usually how anthologies work. Hmm. Next story. Yes, Cowslip Keys. I'm looking forward to this one. One afternoon, Jenny and Mother went up on the hills to look for cowslips. Up and up they climbed to the very top, but they only found one cowslip. Never mind, said Mother. I expect there will be plenty more soon. Let's sit down and look at the view. Yes, said Jenny, and I will tell you a story. Jenny loved to make up stories for Mother. I will tell you one about this cowslip, she said. Now this cowslip is not an ordinary cowslip. It's really a gold key. That's interesting, said Mother. Yes, said Jenny. This cowslip key belongs to a lady mole who owns the cowslip stores inside this hill. She has lost this key and can't unlock her door until she finds it, so I shall give it to her when she comes looking for it. Ah, here she comes now. Can you see her, Mother? Mother didn't answer. She had closed her eyes as if she were asleep. So Jenny waited for the mole to come up close, and then she held out the cowslip key. Thank you, said the mole. Would you like to come and see my cowslip stores? Jenny was delighted. She jumped up and followed the mole down the side of the hill as far as a little blue door, which was half hidden beneath a yellow gorse bush. The mole opened the door with her cowslip key, and they went inside. Everywhere was lit up with tiny glowworm lanterns which were hung all around the walls. There were shelves all around the walls and they were crowded with the strangest assortment of objects. All muddled up with pots of honey, wild raspberry jam, and blackberry jelly were spider spun shawls and green and purple gloves. Why, they're made from foxgloves, cried Jenny as she picked up a pair and tried them on. Yes, Mrs. Fox makes them. She brings them in every morning, said the mole, and Mr. Toad brings those stools over there. She pointed to a heap of toadstools in a corner. Mrs. Frog brings those mats made from bulrushes. I believe she sits by the pond and makes them. Who brings the acorn cups and walnut bowls? asked Jenny. Mr. Squirrel, of course, said the mole. He collects quite a lot of nuts for storing away during the winter. So in the spring he has lots of shells to bring me. We animals are always busy, you know. We work hard when we're awake to make up for the time we lose when we're asleep. Yes, said Jenny. Talking of sleep reminded her of Mother. I must go now, she told the mole. Come and visit me any time you like, said the mole. Take the key. I promise not to lose it, said Jenny. That's all right. There will be plenty of cowslips out soon, said the mole. They all fit this lock, you know. Cowslips really are gold keys said Jenny as she sat down once more on the hill beside Mother. Yes, dear. So you said. Is there any more to the story? asked Mother, opening her eyes. She stared at Jenny. Are you asleep? she asked. Of course not, said Jenny. I just closed my eyes to think. There's so much to tell you and I have to sort it out a bit. Well, that was a quite cute story. And I really like the way the artist drew the kid and the mother in this one they're just very well done it's like it's hard to describe it's it reminds me a lot of like an old animation you would see on tv also the way the animals were drawn like was it mrs or mr fox mrs fox mrs fox and mr toad mm. yep and mrs squirrel or mr squirrel mr squirrel mr squirrel they remind me a lot of the old cartoons as well just the way they're drawn, it's hard to, I can't quite pin my finger on what cartoonist or animation it reminds me of. When I look at this, I think of like, uh, give me something here. Ah, 
um, that unicorn you like, the small one we have two movies of. Unico? Unico. Yeah, it reminds me of Unico. But I must say the people feel better rendered here than in Unico. Though except for maybe the second one. I believe there was a human in that that was either a cat or became a cat. I can't remember which direction that went. The cat became a human girl, and I could have sworn that was the first movie, that the second one oh. was the one with the creepy puppet. I think you're right. And then the third one that we didn't get here in the U.S. I really like the way the people are rendered. They're very well done. Though when I first saw this image on the left-hand page, I was like... Where did her legs go? Because she's kneeling down on the grass and I didn't catch the back of her feet. Which are very clearly there because you can see her sandal. Also the mouse by the toadstools. Yeah, but when I saw it, I saw this line here that's a shadow of the grass and that's all I saw. I'm covering up part of the image with my finger to illustrate to Ember what my initial was like. Is she in the ground? What happened to the... Oh, there they are. <laughs> So, yeah, just thought I'd share that little tidbit. <laughs> so, yeah, as uh, someone previously commented, a lot of my children's stories have animals in them. And, yes, it was both common for the time and a lot of what I ended up with. Because I do remember reading things that weren't about animals or didn't utilize animals. But I seem to remember those being more young adult books than picture books. But I know there were a lot of children's books that didn't use animals. I also forgot to mention one illustration on the page where the little girl has followed the mole mm -hmm. back to her little shop. And you can see the door and the foliage that's partially covering it up. And there's a smiling sunflower in the corner. Quite literally. And it's kind of fun how at the end it's like, okay, so was Mother sleeping and Jenny's story the real story? Or did Jenny fall asleep and it was a dream? Hmm. Or both. So this has been The Little Church by Rosemary Garland and Cowslip Keys by Margaret Connor. From My Bedtime Book of Two Minute Stories. Edited by Rosemary Garland. Illustrated by Tony Escott and Sally Wellman. Thanks for listening. Be interesting to see how much this edits down because two stories instead of three watch it be just as long if you enjoyed this well, we've been at this book a while so there's plenty of other two minute stories that aren't two minutes also lots more embers reading room we are well over 50 episodes now yeah i know right if you really enjoyed this book and would like to find a copy of your own check below for a link we've found a, quite a few of them on amazon just feel like shopping? Check out the Ebates link and get cash back for shopping at stores you probably already shop at. Amazon and Ebates are not sponsors of or in any way affiliated with Amber's Reading Room or any content of the Lux Analysis channel.